MDOT presents the Extra Mile Podcast, Legislative Session. Welcome in to another edition of the Extra Mile Podcast, Legislative Session. I'm Paul Catull, MDOT Digital Media Manager, and I'm joined, as always, by my co-host, Will Kraft, who handles government and constituent affairs here at the agency. And I've said it the last few weeks, but we really are getting close to the end of the legislative session. We've got another great guest for you today. We have Representative Richard Bennett from the Mississippi House of Representatives, and he uh, represents District 120, which is Harrison County. And Representative Bennett took office in 2008, and uh, we're really happy to hear, have you here today. Thank you so much for joining us. I appreciate you having me here today. Uh, sir, Representative took office back in 2008, and it's been a couple of years ago. Does it seem like it's been that long? It seems like it's been long. It seems like I've been up here for a while. <laughs> well, tell us a little bit about yourself. What, what got you involved in politics? What brought you into the fray? Well, my family's been in politics. I had served on the school board, and I had served on the local city council for many years. And when I retired from DuPont, I worked at DuPont for 33 years. Okay. And when I retired there, I had plans of going back doing some consulting there. I was in research and development with DuPont, and uh, I got a phone call. Got a phone call from Jim Simpson, who held this seat previously before me, and he said, I'm moving out of the district. He said, Haley Barber is wanting us to find someone to run in this seat. No one knows I'm not running yet. And uh, I said, let me think about it. And so a couple of days went by. I went and talked to my family who had been in politics. My dad was elected superintendent of education. My uncle was a superintendent of education. And... Um, so we, we knew a little bit about politics, but never on the state level had any of us run. And um, I was still thinking about it because I'm kind of a home person, and I don't like to be away from home, and um, it was a little hesitation there. Then I get a call from Haley Barber like three days later, and he says, I hear you're our guy. <laughs> well, to get a call and you're not in politics and the governor calls you, that's a pretty big deal. I mean, people may not up here may not realize that, but when Haley sure. Barber was on the phone, it was like, Yes, sir. And he said, I need to see you Wednesday. And I was in my car and up here Wednesday. And from there, I got into the race and got elected. And that's how it happened. And, uh, you know, if Haley Barber had not made that call, I don't know if I'd have run or not. So if you weren't the guy before the call, you were after the call. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty well, good. That is a really cool story. Um, we want to talk to you about a variety of topics today. But one of the big ones, you are the uh, chair of the Education Committee. And there's a lot going on right there. You know, there's a, ta a teacher pay raise, so uh, going through with discussion. So do you want to talk about that? Yeah, it's a big deal. This is a historic um, pay raise for teachers. There's never been a pay raise of this significant or this large to the teachers in the state of Mississippi. Uh, average teachers are going to get over $4,000. This will be the first pay raise uh, that has gotten us to the southeastern average and to the national average. That's huge for Mississippi for our recruiting and retainment. Right now, we're losing so many teachers to Alabama and Louisiana and to Tennessee. And I don't know if people realize that that upper scale we were a lot lower in. So young teachers who live on those uh, state lines, they'd go over to Alabama, for instance, and make six to $7,000 more a year oh, wow. than what our teachers were making. Well, they would get over there and they'd be vested in 10 years. They'd jump back into Mississippi okay. and get vested back into ours. So it was really hurting us on our recruitment for those young teachers coming in. And hopefully that uh, this will rectify that and our teachers will stay here and teach. And it, it's huge. And just to bring you up to speed on that, the Senate has signed their conference report. And I actually signed ours a while ago before I walked over here okay. and our other two conferees were in the process of signing it. So that'll hit the floor uh, either this week or next week and it'll be on the governor's desk for him to sign. As you mentioned there, to, to a conference weekend, just uh, want to ask you a little bit about that. I know it seems like the session drags on sometimes and it's just going to last forever, but here we are again, as Paul mentioned, kind of what's going on right now over there with, with as you run through these last two weeks? Well, these last two weeks, obviously the toughest that's whenever the two ends the senate and the house come together and try to have a compromise on their bills a lot of times you know people are passionate about their their side their issue and on both sides so you've got to come to a compromise or the legislation doesn't happen and uh, hopefully we'll we'll 
come to some compromises and have some good legislation. I've always said and I always believe that the more eyes that are on legislation, the better off it is in the end. So I have um, no problem with getting together and debating the issues on it. Absolutely. And uh, I, for, excuse me, Paul. Oh, so obviously, no. just for those out there that may not know, so conferences we get here to this point, you got three uh, appointees, if you will, from right. from each chamber. They come together and, and hash out basically what's been talked about all session. So um, get that conference report signed, and then both houses take it to the floors in respect Take it to the floor. There can be no, no more amendments or anything. That's the final version. That's you right. can't change anything once the conferees bring it back to the chamber. You either vote. Up, you voted up or down. You vote yes or no, and that's the end of it. So there'll be a lot of those going on over the next couple of weeks. I can only imagine. Uh, any other measures going on in the committee or with education that you'd like to? Uh, mention? Well, we've, we've we've got a few things still in the hopper, um, and we're excited about. Obviously, one of the things that I am really proud of and is probably one of the most rewarding pieces of legislation is foster care. Uh, we have that bill out there right. where we will, I don't know if people realize, but these children that are in foster care, when they turn of age, we just turn them loose. They have nowhere to go. They have no family. They have nothing. And uh, 70, it's either 75 or 78 percent of these children wind up unwed parents in the penitentiary. Oh, wow. We've got to change that. It's not fair to them. They've already been dealt a unfair hand in life uh, when, when a parent gives you up or you're taken away from a parent or and you have no family. It's a sad situation. So what we're going to do here is we're going to pay for them to go to, once they get out, we're going to pay for them to go to college, whether it is junior college, four-year college. We're going to pay for them to go to a trade school if that's the case. We've worked with the universities and stuff, and I don't think people realize that whenever they close down the dorms at semester and all, these children have no place to go. Sure. So we're working with them, and actually some of the staff at the uh, junior colleges are actually going to have a program where they're going to invite these kids to their home for Thanksgiving and Christmas. But we're going to keep those dorms open for them because they have no place. You can't just turn them out. So I'm really excited about that. I think it's something that everybody – would be proud of and uh, just give these kids a shot in life. You know, I don't, I don't know if this was intentional or not, but you have grown a, a, apparently seem to have a very vested interest in taking care of the youth in the future, You're kind of in Mississippi, being with education, the teachers, and those are rearing our, our kids in schools and foster kids. Did you kind of always see yourself being involved with education? I know you mentioned you had superintendent uh, in the families. No, I guess not, to be honest with you. Uh, I went to school to be a teacher, and I only taught one semester, All right. and uh, that was in uh, 1978, okay. and uh, I got out of it pretty quick. I went to work for DuPont for the summer and had intentions of going back to teach, but 32 years later, I was still at DuPont. <laughs> and here you are now. There you go. But, 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 I, but I think education is, is our future. It's, it's our lifeline for the state. If you don't move education up, the state of Mississippi is not going to move up. That's right. Oh, no doubt. Uh, it's great to, great to get an update on what's going on with education. We uh, do want to talk a little transportation. So, you know, why, generally, you know, why is transportation important? And then if you want to touch on any projects that are happening in the district. Okay. Uh, well, obviously, roads are important. Um, I've got to say, we have a lot of uh, state roads in Harrison County. We have 26 miles of Highway 90 that runs across, uh, runs um, down the beach, and uh, the state is responsible for those, and we have a few state aid roads. And I've got to tell you, MDOT does a great job on Highway 90. That is an ongoing problem. They're sand continuously blowing on the highway, and um, – I'm going to give a shout out. I'm here. Sounds like I'm um, pandering here, but I'm not <laughs> uh, because uh, I'm here with MDOT. But That's right. I think Brad White brings such a common sense approach to MDOT that I think is needed. He's approachable. Uh, I, the people down our way have nothing but praise for for MDOT and what they do on Highway 90. And I know people get frustrated because that wind is continuously blowing and sands continuously on Highway 90. But they do a fabulous job down there, and I want to thank them for what they do. 
Well, uh, one of the people that you might know uh, from the coast, Miss Murdis Frank, she is uh, she's continually on me about uh, seeing to that that sand blowing across <laughs> ninety. So um, definitely, you're one hundred percent accurate on that. And we certainly appreciate your nice comments about our boss. Absolutely. Do you want to? We're talking the coast. Do you want to bring up? You know, Katrina happened seventeen years ago. That was a long time ago, but it takes a long time it, to build back. And I've been down on the coast. It seems like things are finally really booming down there. Would you say that's a fair assessment? Yeah, it is a fair assessment. I mean, we're we're growing. The casinos are are doing uh, a bang up job. I mean, we're hitting record highs there on uh, visitors. Tourism is up. We still have a lot of challenges. If you go on Highway 90, there's still a lot of empty lots, and insurance is a big problem there, and going to continue to be a problem. And the building codes. So that has slowed us down some, but if you go to the coast, the coast is booming right now. It's uh, we're real proud of where we where we are today, and um, we're just, and once we've gotten moving there, then we had the BP. That's right. That's and true. BP knocked us down again for a while there, and it really hurt us and uh, shut us down. And uh, I think we're moving in the right direction again. We've got a lot of projects happening there. We've got a lot of new businesses coming in. And, um, you know, the aquarium's open. IMMS is open. I don't know if you've been to IMMS, but you can swim with the dolphins, swim with the sharks. Oh, no thanks. I, <laughs> it, it's a great place. It's a great place for kids. And, of course, we have the Children's Museum. So we have a lot of family-oriented things happening also, not just the casinos. That's, oh, that's a, awesome. It's great to hear. Yeah. Well, I know you spend a lot of time driving around the state, and obviously, as, as many Mississippians like myself, we spend a lot of time eating good food. Um, is there a spot, maybe back home, maybe here in the Jackson Metro, maybe somewhere out of the state, that any time you're in the area, you just got to stop by? Well, being from the coast, so it should not surprise y'all, Gulf Coast Daiquiri. Oh, okay. <laughs> like Daiquiri and Restaurant. That. It's in Long Beach on Jeff Davis Avenue. It is a fun place. There's usually music going on there. You, you just can't beat it. And it's really a fun place. It's a new, unique place since Katrina. And they're actually doing an addition now to double their space there. But it is a fun, it's great food. Uh, Trivia is being played there all the time. It's just a fun, good place. Family-oriented place. Even this, though it's a daiquiri shop, it's a good family-oriented oh, place. It might be the best sell on a location thus far because no. I, I've never even heard of this place. So. No, it's 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 great. You got to check it out. Okay. Uh, I, yep. Put that down, Paul. No <laughs> doubt. That I think that's right up our alleys. Definitely hit up the daiquiri spot at some point Absolutely. for sure. Um, Maybe we can broadcast there from one. Day. That's right. <laughs> there you go. That would be the most interesting podcast we've we've ever done for sure. Looking forward to that one. Representative Bennett, we really appreciate you being here. Before we get out of here, just want to ask you, how's the best way for uh, people, constituents to contact you? Well, I I have my cell phone on the website, and um, that's how I want people to call me, text me. Text me is great. It's better than the phone call, but if they would text me, I have my personal cell phone on everything, on um, on the official website, on my personal website. Get in touch with me or call the state capitol. They'll find me. But, uh, yeah, the, my personal cell phone is the best way. We love to see it. We love to see uh, accessible politicians. Right. We uh, really appreciate you being on the show today. Uh, great conversation about education, transportation, the coast. Uh, we do want to – we'll go ahead and get out of here. We want to thank our listeners out there for listening to the Extra Mile podcast legislative session. Remember, you can download and subscribe to the show uh, wherever podcasts can be found. And you can also now watch episodes. Just search Mississippi Department of Transportation on YouTube. And uh, remember to follow us on Facebook and Twitter, at Mississippi DOT is the handle there. And actually, we have a website now, so you can go to gom.com forward slash the extra mile, and you can find all the information on the podcast, all the old podcasts. And uh, remember, as always, remember to drive smart out there on Mississippi highways.